Good evening, everyone. It is me here, Nathan, and to all Ozzy, whichever and whenever you prefer. Um, and today I wanted to teach you guys a little trick here in Unity. The uh, some people call it the zombie AI, and uh, also if you're uh, not new to my channel, stay till the end of the video. I'm gonna have a bit of an explanation. But uh, anyways, let's get on with the script here. So, a uh, quick example here of what the, uh, the script does, if I did it correctly. But uh, the, the point of this episode is, though I might not have all the features perfectly rounded out, I wanted to sort of learn together, which I feel like a lot of YouTubers don't do, a lot of tutorial people don't do. And the reason I want to do it like this is because if I encounter a problem, I want to show you how I go through it, how I fix it, the, 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 just the steps I take, where I look for problems, etc. Uh, but so basically what it does is it finds the player, rotates the front face of the cube to face the player, and then heads towards it at the speed I have set. Um, and if I design this correctly here, and we set it to zero, kind of negative direction, so it's way out there. And what I did with the script here is you see max distance is 500. We're going to jack the speed so it gets here faster. We're going to start up and we're going to see if it does actually get any closer. And I do not believe it is. So we're actually going to go ahead and bring it in a little bit. It's not coming in yet. That's good. Oh, and there it is. It caught on and it's, it's zooming in. So we're actually going to go ahead and set this back to 10 here. We're going to turn down the distance to maybe 50. And then I can obviously once again bring it back in and set it over here All right. but so uh let's let, let's hop into it so first you're going to want to create a new script i'm going to go ahead and delete the old one actually here so delete that and then we're gonna open up not not spotify gosh darn it I'm going to open up Spotify. We're going to right click here and we're going to create a new C sharp script and um, wait for it to load up. Actually, right here, if we go ahead and hit reload, it's gone. Don't worry about that. On the right hand side here, if you're new to this, you're going to have like your assets screen and it should be directly under here. You should not have to do this, but I have a scripts folder as you can see here. So, uh, assets and then scripts. Uh, uh, and you will have your script under here that I named new behavior I actually messed that up if you named it right you won't have to do this I'm gonna do it though um, there you go now we won't have any errors okay reload save cool um, should now do it like that we can shut the other one all right it's all good to go so what we're gonna start off with is we're gonna just set up our first initial variables um, first we're gonna be doing a uh, private variable it's gonna be transform or the type transform however you want to say it and we're gonna name it player actually no we're doing this as public well I mean I mean it's really up to you it doesn't matter okay I want to just correct myself real quick because in the video there obviously you heard I said it doesn't matter but actually it does uh, quick explanation here as you see this is a public float uh, when you go into the unity editor you can access and edit public floats from inside here and public floats can be accessed from other scripts so there is a big difference and if it's a public script like um, like if I were to do rather than public or yeah public transform if I did public camera I would have to drag and drop the camera into the slot. So if I did public transform, I would have to drag and drop either the player or drag and drop the transform into the slot. So it does matter quite a bit. But since I did private, because it was private, I had to assign it within the script because I would not be able to access it within Unity Editor. Hopefully that clears up any misconceptions right there. But I guess... For now, we're going to leave it as private. Uh, we're also going to be setting up a rotation and movement speed. 
So we'll do public float. Uh, float is the same as an integer, except it can have a decimal place. So it's not just one, two, three, four, five. It's 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2, etc. Uh, so public float, we're going to be doing ro rotation speed, and we're also going to be doing move speed. Then we're going to be creating a private float that'll be uh, distance, which is kind of just going to be a placeholder per se. And then we're going to be setting another public, so private, public, private, public, um, float max distance. And this is going to be the max distance that the player can actually be seen by the enemy. So we're going to go ahead and open up or create a vo or function start here, void start. I hate that it does that automatically. Okay, and in here we're actually going to assign player here to our actual uh, player in game. If it decides to work, it, we're going to actually assign it to this object so we can interact with it. Oh my gosh, why? Are you kidding me? Okay, so we're going to be doing player, because that's what we need in the variable. We're going to do equals game object dot find game object with tag. Careful to do game object with tag, not objects. Find game object with tag. Parentheses and quotations player, because if you already have this done, which you should, Go to your player object here, you go to tag, and it should have player, especially if you use like the built in Unity uh, player prefabs. I'm pretty sure they're already tagged with player, but if not, go ahead and select your player object and give it the tag player. And then we're going to be doing uh, dot transform because that's going to be the variable we're interacting with the most. Now we're going to actually go ahead and create void update, I believe. Yeah, void update. And uh, part of this here is preference, but just, just follow with me. Try, try and follow with me. We're going to be measuring the distance between the player and the game object this is attached to. Okay? And we're going to be seeing if it is under max distance. So that might be a tad bit complicated, but just, just try and follow with me here. So we're going to be doing vector three, or is it vector three dot distance? Because that measures the distance between the two, uh, the two uh, objects that are put in between here. As you see here, it wants a vector 3a and then vector 3b. And it measures the distance between them. Right there, it says it returns the distance between a and b. So, we're going to go in here and we're going to double space, put that in there. Um, so, object a is obviously player. Player dot position. And you got to be careful here because if you were to just do player, it would be only seeing the transform or the transform of the player, which contains scale, rotation, and position. It contains all three, and it, it, it won't understand that. It won't be able to measure with that. So you have to be sure to do transform dot position so it only reads the X, Y, and Z from position. So player dot position, so it's only accessing those variables. And then we're going to be doing itself, so lowercase game object. It refers to the game object this is attached to, or the parent to the script per se. Game object dot transform, because we're wanting to see the transform of the object dot position, so it only sees the position for the X, Y, and Z. Now, don't be afraid, it's going to go completely red, but that's because it, it, uh, the if statement is a yes or no thing. Right now we're giving it a number, and it doesn't understand just numbers on its own. So what we have to do here is we have to ask it or compare it to our max distance. So we were given this number, and we're going to say if it's less than or equal to our maximum distance. Did I, did I, there we go. I was very confused there. And then we're going to put in the squiggly brackets for our if statement. And there you go. That was semi the hard part done with. So now what we're going to do is, because I like to keep my code separate and clean, we're going to be initiating or calling the uh, function follow player. No, just follow player, semicolon. 
we're gonna go down a few places here and we're gonna actually create the follow player oh my goodness and in here we're gonna be handling the rotation of the object and the actual following of the object so first um, a little thing here is you don't have to do game object dot transform to refer to this objects transform if you're planning to edit any of them like to say if I was wanting to change the position I don't have to type all this out I can just do transform dot position and it will refer to the object this is attached to hopefully that makes sense but if not just, just try and still follow with me here so we're gonna be actually doing transform dot rotation not position transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion dot slurp or at least that's how I say it beginning parenthesis transform dot rotation another quaternion here dot look rotation player dot position minus transform dot position and then rotation speed times time dot delta time alrighty two out of three hard hard semi confusing lines done final line right here this is or up there what that did is it basically rotates the front face of the object to face the player or the, the core of the player and then now we shall move it, which is actually super simple. Transform dot position because we're wanting to change the position. Plus equals transform dot forward times our movement speed times time dot delta time. And that's it. So now we have the script done, but we need to actually set up the uh what, what would you call it? The uh the rest of it inside Unity, the assigning of the public variables per se. So if we go ahead and go over to our test enemy here that we put up there, we'll remove that component and we'll take over here the follow player script. And it should load up. Hold on. Oh no, it's going. Oh, gosh darn it, dude. There we go. Is it okay now? Why is it angry at that? I'm sorry about this. This was my fault because I accidentally created two, I guess. There we go. Alright, let's try and forget about that one. I hope it doesn't give me any more problems. So now that follow player script is working, we gotta like let it reload. Alright, so our rotation speed, we're gonna go ahead and just set that to 5. It's move speed will set to 15, and it's maximum distance will set to 100 for now. And so, that, that, that's it. We're done. Go ahead and play on your game and enjoy it. As you see there, it comes in really fast and it spins around us. That is because it constantly is applying 15 movement speed. It, it cannot stop. So... In, in a later tutorial, I'll, I'll, I'll fix this to where he like nudges you or deals damage, etc. But for now, I hope you all enjoyed this little tutorial. It was my first, so I was a bit stuttering with some of it. And, uh, yeah. Now, on to my older viewers, per se. Um, the reason behind this video is I, I was thinking to myself about like what, what I do with my time a lot. And... I mean, to me, it's obvious. I'm, I'm programming a lot of the time, and I feel like I've gotten to the point where I can read scripts and 99% of the time understand everything about them. Now, whether I can replicate it perfectly on the first try, no, but I understand it to the point where I can edit and do what I need. I feel like I've gotten to the point where I can try and help people because I've gone around and I've looked at people's problems on like uh, the not the unity wiki but the uh, unity forums and I've, I've been able to like help I, as far as I know I've been able to help them solve it and so I was hoping just making a tutorial would be some sort of content to get out on my channel and it's a bit of a different genre 
and I was just I was just given my little bit of input for this. I know other people have done it, but I I feel like it was at least something. It it, it was my effort. So uh, yeah, if you like this content, let me know. If you'd like to see something else, once again, let me know. Uh, I'm trying to find some uh, I'm trying to find some new ideas for you guys. Alright, I will see you all later. Bye bye.